I've gotta be honest, I've, I've never been much of a projector guy. From warm up time to ambient light issues, to input latency, to terrible washed out colors, and certainly cost, I've just, I've never been a fan. So when ViewSonic reached out to me asking if they could sponsor this video, I, I kind of ignored them. But they're a persistent bunch, and when I finally looked at the specs of this PX700 HD projector, I was pretty blown away. For just $499, you can get a projector that supports 1080p, outputs at a very bright 3,500 lumens, which makes viewing acceptable in both day and night, has exceptionally accurate color that actually looks good, is 3D capable, if that's your jam, and boasts a 16 millisecond input latency, which is not just fast for a projector, but is actually faster than most of the TVs released this year, which means non-competitive gaming on this projector is actually like really good. It, it works great. My younger brother got married earlier this year, and as any young couple in the middle of college might be, they're not loaded and we're using a very small 32-inch TV. So I decided to hook them up with a better setup, starting, of course, with the ViewSonic PX700 HD. Now, they're renting their apartment, which means they can't permanently attach a TV or projector to the wall. So we built this clever little platform out of wood that is adjustable by this very firm ball head, but also stable. And uh, it's, the little ball head is mounted upside down onto a cheap, I think the brand is Pile tripod stand. It doesn't look spectacular. It's not winning any interior design wards, but it meets their needs. And as you can tell, it perfectly fits their wall, spanning to a size of nearly 100 inches. Yeah, 100 inches. Not bad for a $499 projector, eh? Next up, audio. My brother's a musician and subsequently doesn't want some dinky little sound bar. Here's a pro tip for you. If you're on a budget, just use studio monitors. Now, sure, you're not going to get surround sound, you're stuck to stereo. But if you ask me when we're talking audio, and I don't know a lot of things, but I know audio pretty well, I think quality is way more important than quantity. And quality doesn't mean expensive. For example, these JBL 3 Series Mark II cost under $300 for the pair, but they sound great for movies, games, and yes, of course, music. Now, because studio monitors are self-powered, the amplifier's inside, and that's pretty handy, but there is a downside, and that's that um, there isn't a way to control volume without a preamp, which we've excluded for budgetary reasons. However, that's where this little box comes in. This is the shit sis. Yeah, uh, you heard that right. But sis it is not. It's actually very high quality. <laughs> That was the stupidest joke I've ever made. The SIS is a passive preamp, which means you don't have to plug it in. So we use the audio out on the projector, which by the way is my one complaint with this thing. There is an optical out, which seems a little bit silly. But yeah, we use the audio out jack to RCA, which we can then plug into the SIS, and then we plug in the RCA outputs which terminate in XLR that we can then plug into the studio monitors. Now, listen to me, audio people, this setup is not ideal, I know. It's not balanced, and in theory, with longer cable runs, is prone to signal interference, but it actually sounded really good and kind of surprised me. We didn't have any interference at all. But yeah, if you're using a projector, really any projector, especially because they're typically mounted in the sky and don't have that many source in, uh, source options to begin with, you're really better off getting a home theater receiver that can handle source selection, HDMI switching, and of course, audio output. I didn't do that though, because they only use a launch day PS4, which I actually gifted them for Christmas last year, and for normal people, is actually really great. Now, the projector supports powered USB, so you could use a Chromecast or a Fire TV stick if you wanted, but for less than $300, you can get a box that does Netflix, Hulu, PlayStation TV, YouTube, and oh, plays AAA games. So a PS4 it is. Going from the PlayStation to the projector, we have a 50-foot HDMI cable that we got from Walmart for 35 bucks, but it's actually really high quality. And this low latency stuff isn't marketing mumbo jumbo at all. In fact, I was playing Red Dead Redemption 2 and there was noticeably less input lag than my old but beloved Panasonic P65 V10. Uh, it's a plasma screen and when it came out, it was renowned for low input latency. So I was pretty impressed. For around $1,000, my brother and now sister-in-law have a killer entertainment setup, which honestly, I don't even think you could get close to beating for the same price. If you're interested in any of the gear mentioned, you can check it out via the links below. But get stoked for a killer Hackintosh build that is coming in the next video that is actually 40% smaller 
yeah, smaller than Apple's Mac Mini. It's gonna be awesome. So be sure to subscribe and enable notifications for that one. But most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy.